Hey guys, welcome to Bookish Islander. My name is Juan. I hope you're all doing very well. I'm doing fine myself. Welcome to my recent reads video. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the books that I finished reading this week, also the books that I'm in the middle of reading, and a couple of books that I'm about to begin. A lot of booktubers read novellas in November, but also a lot of booktubers read non-fiction books in November, and this year I've been doing both. As part of non-fiction November, I read The World of Yesterday by Austrian writer Stefan Zweig. I finished that last week, so I talked about it in my previous recent reads. But this week I also read another book by the same author, in this case a novella. And that novella is entitled Letter from an Unknown Woman. Letter from an Unknown Woman it's a short novel in which a man receives a letter from a woman he cannot remember or place. And the whole book is just a transcript of that letter. In the letter this unknown woman makes all kinds of revelations and uh, I could see the end from a mile, but I'm not going to say anything negative about this book. Despite that, despite that, I don't think that was the point. I think the plot, it's kind of melodramatic. It's very popular. I mean, no doubt Stefan Zweig was one of the most popular writers of the first two decades of the 20th century. And now he has recovered some of that popularity uh, uh, after the Nazi regime wanted to or try to erase him and his writing from history, from the history of German culture because of uh, his Jewishness. Letter of an Unknown Woman is the first work of fiction by him that, I'm, uh, that I've read and I would recommend it. I think it's, it's masterfully in what it does. It's not as literary, it's not as... Don't, do not expect something highbrow, but it's definitely something worth reading. I enjoyed it a lot. It's so short that if I told you about what this woman writes in the letter, I would be spoiling the plot. And like I said, I saw the end, I saw how this plot was going from a mile, and you probably will too, because he uses the language of melodrama here and domestic drama. However, however, I think what this uh, book tells us about women in the early part of the 20th century, and more importantly, men, heterosexual men, uh, during that time is um, great. And it, it, he manages to do this in a, in a in a literary way that it's incredibly accessible. You will be entertained if you read this book, but it's a lot more than that. The second book that I finished this week is The Man Who Saw Everything by uh, Deborah Levy. Um, she's an English author and this book was long listed for the Booker Prize in 2019. I read this book with Sean the Book Maniac. Um, it was a body read. It was my first body read with him and I'm sure it's going to be the first of many body reads with him. He was an excellent body reader, not surprises there. Uh, he's, a, he's a really good reader and I love his videos. So I wasn't surprised that he was such a good body reader. But sometimes, you know, with body, body reads are so particular, you need to have a certain chemistry. And of course you have different chemistry with different people. So it's also as much about you as it is about the person you're reading with. And I think in this case, it really works. It was a great experience. Now, about this book, we're both hugely disappointed in it. Um, if you want to see uh, how disappointed Sean was, go ahead and watch his video, his Friday Reads video from this week. He talks about it. And really, I echo every single word he said about this book. It was promising. It had a promising start and then it all fell apart and I just couldn't care anymore about any of the characters and it's a shame because it's a short book. It's my first Deborah Levy book but it's not going to be my last. I was not put off. I, I think this book still shows that she is a good writer and possibly a great writer for all I know. This book is not the, be the best showcase for her talents although her talent is contained here somewhere. Yeah, I definitely want to read her nonfiction. I'm looking forward to reading her memoir entitled The Cost of Living. And I also want to read a previous novel by hers entitled Hot Milk. Now, because this book was so disappointed, so disappointing, I'm not in any real hurry to get to those, but I will get to them. And I hope that my idea of Deborah Levy as a writer improves. Um, yeah, so this is a two-star read for me, as it was for Sean. I would not really recommend it, but if you've read Deborah Levy and you love her writing, please let me know in the comment section down below, particularly if you've liked this book. I'd like to hear why. Not because I'm uh, looking for a fight or anything, but it's because I'm really, I was really baffled by this book. And if I had to explain why I was so baffled by it, I would have to spoil it. And it's a really short book, so I wouldn't want to spoil 
anything for anybody, but just let me know if you've loved it. Also, you know, if you didn't like it, let's bitch about it in the comment section down below too. And the third book that I finished reading this week was uh, Times in, no, Love in Times of uh, Cholera by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I read it in Spanish in this gorgeous edition that has all kinds of um, spoilery um, illustrations. And uh, yeah, this was also a buddy read, but this was a real life buddy read as opposed to a virtual buddy read. I buddy read this with uh, my boyfriend and yeah, it took us a couple of months. It, it is quite a thick book and this is, this is a huge edition. So yeah, if you have a smaller book, it'll be thicker than this. Um, but also we had to take a lot of pauses from it because of life stuff, life stuff happening. So it took us a while, but we both thoroughly loved it. I had read it before, but I, for some reason I didn't remember anything about it. And when I looked at my Goodreads, apparently when I read it originally, I decided to give it three stars. But now upon rereading it and body reading it, I decided to give it four stars because it is an excellent book. Now onto the books that I'm in the middle of and well, the middle of, this is not really anywhere near the middle. Okay. Uh, Dax Newbury poured. I'm still making progress. I read it when I can, but because it's such a thick book and it has this kind of structure that is not really a structure. You know what I mean? If you've tried to read it or if you've read it, uh, it's all like one whole, um, there are breaks as you can see here. Uh, so it's not, a one sentence novel. There are breaks every so often, but not very often. And uh, yeah, it has, a, it has a structure that for me, it, it's been great because I can go into it, in and out of it whenever I feel like it, but I still mean to read it, to read some of it, at least a few pages every week. That's my goal. I don't know how long it will take me to finish it, but yeah. So you probably get sick of seeing it on my channel. At some point, I think I'll probably stop talking about it on my recent reads, on my fri Friday reads, until I've actually finished it. And I'm also still reading A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. I'm doing that as part of my Booker Through the Decades project that I've talked about many times before, so I'm not gonna go into it uh, with more detail than that. Um, yeah, it's another uh, really big book. It's not my cup of tea. It's not a book that I would have picked up had I not been doing this project, which has made me question my project. But it's not the first book that happens with when I read The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. I had similar feelings. I think it's a, it's a worthy book. Uh, I don't like worthy. I think it's worth reading. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting book. It has an interesting structure. It tells an interesting story. I'm just not really into it but I'll, I'll soldier on and I don't know when I'll finish. I'm again, not in any real hurry to do so. And then there are two books that I'm about to begin reading this week, both possibly one maybe this weekend and the other one on Monday. So one of them, it's a novella that I put on my TBR and I would have read it uh, by now had I not decided to read Letter from an Unknown Woman. So I pushed this one aside, but I'll try to get to it this weekend, definitely this week. And I'm talking, of course, about Breakfast at Tiffany's by Truman Capote. If you watch my novellas for November uh, TBR, you notice that I mentioned three novellas and this one was the last one. So I haven't gotten to it yet, but I will get to it soon and hopefully talk about it. It will be a reread for me. I've read it before, but for some reason, I have the movie in my head. I've watched the movie many times and I've only read the novella once. So I really want to exercise the memories from the movie. That sounds kind of heavy going, doesn't it? I mean, I really like the movie, but I really like to know the book and be able to separate both the book and the uh, novella in my head. So that's why I'm doing this reread. And the other book that I'm about to begin, which is going to be a buddy read, is The Hunger Angel by Hertha Müller. Now she's a Romanian writer who actually writes in German because she's from a small part of Romania where they speak German. I believe she moved to Germany anyway in the 1980s. She won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2009 and I've been meaning to read anything at all by her ever since. I haven't managed to. This is gonna be the time to do so. I'm gonna be buddy reading this with Amelia, who is a regular commenter, commenter here on BookTube, not just on my channel, but on many other channels. Uh, we buddy read uh, The World of Yesterday recently, and it was a great experience. So I'm really looking forward to starting this buddy read with Amelia on Monday.
And these are my recent reads. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you've read any of these books. Let me know if um, you haven't. Let me know if you have any questions about them or if you have any suggestions for books. No, for me. Any If you have any books to suggest me to read, that suggest I can't speak English today, that's fine. I should probably go back and read more books so I can learn English uh, a lot gooder, right? Okay, so I hope you have a great weekend or having a great weekend or a great week whenever you're watching this. And uh, I hope to see you again very soon. Okay, bye-bye.